today we're revealing why your best health begins in the bathroom. And joining us now to help answer some of your emails with your biggest bathroom questions is our friend, Dr. Jorge Rodriguez. Welcome back oh, to the show. Oh, my pleasure. All right, you ready to jump right in? Yeah. Let's get to the first question dealing with bathrooms. Joe from New York City writes, Dear doctors, why is it that I feel perfectly fine eating my meal and then all of a sudden I get the rumbles and have to rush to the toilet? Is this from what I'm currently eating or stuff waiting to come out? Ooh, Ooh that's <laughs> We've all yeah. been there. Yeah, we have. It's like, uh oh. Boy, I'm yes. glad you're, you're here, Jorge. No, because... this, is, this is right up my out. Oh, never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got what I'm saying. Um, anyway, it's both. There's, there's something called a gastrocolic reflex. And every time you eat, your stomach sends a signal to the rest of your intestines saying, hey, clear the way. There's something new coming down. Right? <laughs> so it's, it's pretty smart. You yeah. put something in your stomach, and that grumble is basically the intestines moving to get everything out, you know, and it's right. not unusual. So basically plan ahead if you're eating a meal. Just be, be near you a know, restaurant Some people have it, it a lot more exaggeratedly than others. Well, let's move on. Our next email is from Carol Memphis, who writes, this is very embarrassing for me to admit, but I have hemorrhoids. It's extremely painful, especially when I go number two. So I just want to know, how do I poop comfortably? And I'm glad Carol's asking this. We've been talking about how straining can be yeah. bad for your health. Straining, prolonged sitting on the toilet can increase your risk for hemorrhoids, and it can be very painful as well. Very, very much so. I mean, first of all, hemorrhoids are veins, mm -hmm. and we all have veins in the anus. Maybe not some politicians, because I hear they're perfect butts, but otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to keep that other child coming out. Love all right. you know, you're, you're getting the soap so for the segment. That's good stuff. Any further, and this has been used. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the show. Anyway. And, and I'm here to help you out, Dr. Okay. Rodriguez. Well, you do the talking, all right. and I'm going to do a little so audio visual. So hemorrhoids are veins, and you got to remember that Kinda arteries... Like sure, don't shoot that at me. <laughs> but arteries take blood down, veins bring things back up. If you strain, right... Even just in the bathroom, even lifting weights, you're going to cause all the veins to get swollen. Inflammation. Kind of, kind of like that. And it pushes the hemorrhoids out. So maybe not like that. Mm -mm. But, but then they don't take the blood up and the hemorrhoids start getting more enlarged and more enlarged. So that is how straining can cause a hemorrhoid. Ouch. All right, also constipation. Right. If the stool is too hard, just mechanically, it'll irritate the veins and things won't flow freely. It's a huge problem in pregnancy that we fight all the time. And during pregnancy, you know, the progesterone can sometimes slow the bowel down and that's gonna contribute to constipation and, and hemorrhoids as well as the, the vessels being compressed on by the, the large uterus. So you have these two things during pregnancy. And then the one time, even though we said straining was bad, the one time when we ask you to strain as much as you can just like you're having a bowel movement is when you're trying to push a baby out of there. Uh, that's so, a good one. Yes, so that's one time. And so after labor, a lot of times women can really fight with really bad hemorrhoids. And so we almost automatically give a stool softener and, um, and also uh, medication for hemorrhoid treatment because those are the two times that, you know, you really might get So it. in some cases you can't prevent hemorrhoids. Like you right. said, childbirth is childbirth. But eating a high-fiber diet, staying hydrated, that, those, those, keeping your stool soft can be key, right? That is the key. The key is to have softer bowel movements. You still want it to be formed, but you want it to go out without irritating anything. And if you don't eat a high-fiber diet with lots of fruits and vegetables, just start your morning off with a fiber supplement. But the first rule is go to the bathroom when you feel like you have to go to the bathroom. All right? A lot of people were trained as a kid go in there and you have to have one bowel movement a day. You don't have to have one bowel movement a day, right? Some people have one bowel movement every two to three days. That's normal. So going in there trying to force it is probably the worst thing you can do. Yep. If you do, you know, actually leaning forward, you know, puts it in a much more, you know, anatomically correct angle. Because there's a big angle there. Down is. There is. I mean, you didn't know we had angles. It's a angle but... trying to come out of your body. Exactly. More of your favorite bathroom questions when we return. We're back with Dr. Jorge Rodriguez, who's helping us answer some of your biggest bathroom questions today. Our next question comes from John in Baltimore, Maryland, and he writes, Hey doctors, I recently had a party 
and someone clogged my toilet and it really grosses me out. Is it safe to plunge someone else's poop? <laughs> Where do we get these uh, questions? Is this for real? Yeah, it's a for real question. <laughs> yeah. And it's directed to me. So, <laughs> well, the plunger, the plunger is next to you. No, wait, well, this you is the plunger, the but this is like, I mean, it's just common sense. Is it safe if you do it correctly? But I guess what they're leading to, what if poop sprays all over the place, you know? And, and I heard that you guys already talked about it. Um, feces is bacteria. So if you get it in contact with your eye or your mouth, God forbid, because you're like plunging away, then you could contract whatever they have. Right. But That's why we always emphasize yeah. safe plunging on this show. Plunging always. the so let's, so let's talk the, about the technique, because if you just go in there and you're trying to... Uh, you gotta it's put important. a hazmat suit. And you yeah, have to create like a little space to get the suction in there. Yeah. If you're trying to plunge through a... It's not like golf where you want a good follow-through. Right. You do this, you don't want to go... Oh. Kind of, you want to you move things around a little yes. bit in there. Yeah, Instead you want a little bit. Let's slam it this all was around. Like, I guess you put it in with a little bit of a vacuum, and all you need is to like. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, and get things pushed forward. You and, don't have to become. And for heaven's sakes, get it out of the bathroom when you're done. Don't put it in the sink. Yeah. Well, I, what I do is when you're done with put it, a bag. rinse it off in the toilet, and then actually you can put it in between the toilet seat and the toilet so it can dry off. Right. Because last thing you want to do also is just take the plunger out. And, dripping and all then over, just it's dripping yeah. all over your, yeah. your bathroom. He's, that's He's another, somewhat of an expert. He is a plunger yeah. expert. <laughs> well, I want to move on to our next one. It's from Johan <laughs> from Salt Lake City. He writes, Dear doctors, I had a colonoscopy a few weeks ago, and I've been passing really bad gas ever since. Why does my gas smell so bad? Well, my answer is because it's gas, but it isn't blamed. You can't blame it on the colonoscopy. I mean, the gas that you had put into the colonoscopy two weeks ago, that disappears within a few hours. It just permeates into your skin or you evacuate it. And that gas shouldn't smell bad. Not at all. It's completely. We don't want bad smelling gas when we're doing a colonoscopy. It's just carbon dioxide sometimes, you know, or oxygen. I mean, that's the cleanest you ever feel. Is that's the cleanest you ever are, probably. During and after a colonoscopy. Absolutely. So why could she be having these well, it's, smelly? It's what she's eating. Mm -hmm. I mean, protein, uh, beans, they all can turn certain proteins that are high in sulfur. You know, there's a small chance that maybe evacuating the bowel, she changed some of her intestinal bacteria. Mm. You know, so maybe a little bit of probiotics or acidophilus mm -hmm. for those days might help. But it's usually a matter of diet. And, and quite honestly, another big thing is a lot of times it means you're eating a healthy diet mm -hmm. because that, that your body wants those proteins Fiber. and fibers, and it's just your bacteria saying, woohoo! Yeah, look, it, it is Give me plenty it, it of good food down here. Gas. It's yes. not going to smell good. It is, it is well, what it is. Last time yeah. I you know, checked. It's a good thing she's getting her colonoscopy. So. That's the, that's yeah, the that's main point, message. actually. And you have a little device or something that we can use if, uh, yes. if you, every time you go into the restroom, it's not so pleasant in there? This is called Just a Drop. And basically, it's uh, an, a plant-based substance that you can put in the toilet water before you use it. If you tend to have, you know, overly odiferous uh, stool, you put that in there. And I hear that, not that it says anything about you all, but that you're all going to get some today. Oh, wow. All right, okay. Okay. Blushing in the audience, like I don't. Am I supposed to clap? Am I supposed to be excited? That's a great thing to stick in your purse. That's really nice. Yeah. Dr. Rodriguez, hey, always a pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks pleasure. for coming. Coming up, Dr. Sears makes a potty training house call for one desperate mom.